Hello, everybody, and welcome back to episode 317 of the Siren Stars Podcast. I'm Kurt, joined once again this week by my singing and dancing co-hosts, Peter and Jake. <laughs> That's right, Kurt. Um, this week, we're coming at you with, uh, with a sponsored edition from the New, New York Times bestseller, uh, A Tale of, uh, of Betrayal and Love as Fred Durst visits the George of the Jungle set. That's right. Come and go to your local bookstore or Kindle online and buy uh, I Did It All for the Tookie, Biscuit versus Brendan. <laughs> you know what, Peter? That was actually, like, who's lying quality intro roll. Like, you, you, you brought a, a tear to the eye of Colin Mockery with that. Um, that was actually pretty I could, good. I can see that. I can see <laughs> that was it in, pretty in my, good. my mind's eye. Just I, was, I, one, I, I could one see one that. One one hundredth of his power level. I could easily see that as like a weird newscaster's intro bit. <laughs> like that, I said my cap and to now you, sir. And now sports with Jake. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got the Brendan Frasers uh, winning against the Tookies. That's all I have on my mind is now George the Jungle. <laughs> and George that, the Jungle. That movie had no business being that good. <laughs> no, no, it didn't. But Not we're so glad that it, it, it had that level of quality that it stuck yeah. with us. Yeah, would you say in that, our brains. Yeah, would you say that maybe Fred Durst and, and Brendan Fraser are Lady and the Tramp in it on both both sides of your mind? <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna be in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> They're having a, a crazy threesome with me right now. Uh, we're all lady tramp on a taco. Uh, you know what I mean. And our Discord chat is no a little bit more. No one should know uh, that. No one should ever have to bear the burden of that knowledge. <laughs> I want. Am I? Am I saying I want Brendan Fraser and Fred Durst in celebration of Pride Month? Uh, am I saying I want Brendan Fraser and Fred Durst? The lady tramp a taco while it's <laughs> above some place, well, uh, uh, and I'm and I'm watching from afar. Uh, maybe I don't know. Wait, um, how could how could you be watching from afar? In oh, uh, where do you what? Who do you think's holding the taco? <laughs> I assume in this situation would be you. I'm holding the taco. Right, so you would be They're in the middle of it. it. You can't really like. I am. Yeah. Be I'm, from I'm looking. It's not really an no, impersonal I'm... task. Oh, I'm not right up in the 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 cheese and salsa, if you know what I mean. But uh, I might catch a little can, crumbs here you and like there. A, do you have like a fucking owl head waist where you can rotate 180 <laughs> degrees? Because I think you're gonna need that to watch set. that. <laughs> I'm I'm surprisingly flexible. I, oh, you know what? I can know? I could see maybe technically it'd be from afar because you're watching in a full length mirror from across the uh-huh. room. Yeah, and that's so we were des- what you're seeing. Yeah, well, it, it, I'm assuming it'd be in my room, which we have designed our room in a way that it's more of a, a mirror funhouse layout. You walk in, and so you've remodeled since we were there. <laughs> oh yes, yes, yeah. And, uh, we we got we got that uh, you know tax credit for buying a house, and it's just that that came in, and we're just like, all right, time to move things around. Put mirrors up everywhere. Let's go, chop chop. Everything is a mirror. The uh, the mm-hmm. flooring people were a little uh, floored when I said, "Yep, mirrors. I want to walk on mirrors." <laughs> I want to see everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, th- th- this tangent brought to you by Windex. <laughs> Windex. <laughs> Nothing cleans like Windex. Buy some fucking I, Windex. They didn't I send us ad copy. Wipe the shame away. <laughs> so you can see yourself better. Purge and, the memories from that mirror you snore cocaine <laughs> off of. Windex. And as always, we're coming at you live. From the writer's room at Bob's Burgers, and we're going to take a little tour later of the animation studio where I know they are just cracking the whip, literally and figuratively, on getting those shadows put in for this Bob's Burgers movie and the sequel 
that we know is go we're going to get one. Just all shadows. Shadows everywhere. Make it look like a real a yeah, feature real length flick. And definitely not a three part episode that they just stitched together. They definitely and didn't some... just. Uh, they taught one of their animators how to use Blender <laughs> and had some yeah. models rigged up. I, I am wondering if they did any mocap for this. To be honest, some of the some of the mo mo uh, bleh, motions movements seemed pretty uh, fluid that I have not I think seen. That's on, just on like normal. more animation than they typically do. Like, did they, they like they, up they, the they, FPS too? Yeah, I think it's just more did. more frames of animation. I think is, is yeah. the okay. big difference that you you notice. Um, and it's happened before on the show, like. Those of you who've watched Bob Burgers know that the show is kind of pretty pretty sedentary. Like, there's not a lot of movement in any given scene. Um, right. Mm -hmm. So when there is movement, they actually, like, you know, have the time to draw a bunch of frames for it. And it, it's, like, very jarring because you're not used to seeing that much movement. I remember an episode where, where Ted gets his hand, like, caught in some sort of trap he sets for a rodent or something. And he's, like, freaking out. And it's a lot of... A lot of animation that I wasn't expecting mm. to come out. Um, and this movie definitely had had a lot more animation than probably the rest of the series combined, it feels like. Yeah, honestly. It was um it looked good. It was a great movie. But uh yeah, we'll get more on that later. Yeah. It's the one we watched this week. <laughs> In case you, you weren't guessed. aware. Feature. We featured it. Um but if that's that's our future feature. Our present predicament is is Trey Watch, <laughs> the segment where we watch trailers. Yeah, our weekly trailer review and roundup segment we call Trey Watch because I don't know it sounded good at the time I guess. <laughs> We've done this for 317 episodes. Sometimes a decision you make in episode four. Sticks around for the subsequent 313 episodes, and you don't have I a mean, good answer for when people ask you, "Why'd you call it that?" I, <laughs> Some people call it tradition. I honestly believe that uh, Baywatch was one of the movies that it was, was. Like, out <laughs> at that was. time. We're like Baywatch, Trey Watch. That makes a lot of sense. That yeah. was. That was the beginning and end of my train of thought. Ba Baywatch <laughs> might have been the first trailer featured on Treywatch. In fact, I'm so. now about 85% certain that it was the first, and 95% certain that it was in that first batch. Do the archives! Dig it up. Just dig up that relic. Relic of Christmas past. <laughs> gotta look up. We gotta make it an NFT and sell it. First, first trade watch. NFT. NFT. The first, first trade trade watch. Yeah. Trade watch, may watch NFT coming soon to a. To you a know, I would over see. Here. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say, um, you know, who would make an NFT and who would buy NFTs would be Beavis and Butthead. That's true. Beavis oh, and yeah. Butthead would be. Be the be crypto bros a hundred percent. They would fax their butt onto the internet, and it would be pictures of their butts, and they would make like a million dollars from it. Damn man, that should have been, been the plot of this movie. A new Beavis and Butthead uh, storyline if they wanted to reboot the uh, series. Who's gonna um, get some butt coin? <laughs> Look at this NFT. It's sixty nine. <laughs> nice. Thanks. Thanks. Well, Thanks. In, interrupt this uh, deconstruction of Beavis and Butthead uh, to wish my mother a happy retirement. She's officially retired. She'll never hear hey. the show, but. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. Congratulations. Go home, Mom. Hang Find on. some hobbies. She's, she's fucking, I'm sure she's very pleased. To not have to commute into Manhattan every morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my uh, my mom is is loving retirement. She thought she would like. I always remember her telling me like, "Oh yeah, I'll probably like pick up like temp work for like, you know, being like a." Apparently, they do like 
substitute like administrators, which I found was odd. They're like, yeah, well, I'll someone's got to run the show when they're out. <laughs> so. Exactly. Yeah. So that makes sense. Um, it's just you never like say, oh, my substitute principal. You know. Um, but yeah, she was like, I might pick up some temp work, and she like has not looked back. She's just full blown. No oh, shit. I'm golfing. Yeah. I'm. I got an e-bike. And I got an <laughs> old lady biker gang going. <laughs> and just they're terrorizing the the streets of Clarence on their e bikes. <laughs> I think uh, I think you have that energy for the first like you know three four or five years of retirement, and then you start to get a little bored, and that's when you start like picking up the shifts yeah. at the part time corner store. And that at might be I what, hope what that's happens. the story behind. Just when I was all the old people that work at convenience stores. I was out. They pulled me back in. Oh man, yeah. There's, there's, you know, it wasn't sustainable. But I was sad to see the corner store that is across from the other corner store in my neighborhood. One of, one of them, uh, is gone. There is still, there are still other intersections where there are more corner stores than there are blocks. Yeah. There are when, you, when you said the corner store across from the other corner store, I'm like. I, I was the blight meme. Do you have the slightest idea how little that narrows it down? <laughs> I'll give you a hint. Were they it was feuding... the one that had the good food. Were they feuding corner stores? Or were they just like... Not even really. One is just... Like, one was... Yeah. One was a, uh, it was a... It was just a place to get, like, get your smokes and, like, get a get a sandwich or something. Um, and then, you know, just grab crap. The other one had, like, a produce section and, like, a little a little fridge full of fresh fruits and things. Fresh and that was the one that closed down. I was, so it's, it's a sad day. Um, Rip. None of this yeah. has anything to do <laughs> with Beavis and Butthead. With Beavis butthead. and Butthead? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Beavis and uh, Butthead do the universe. Mike Judge is back in the saddle. Uh... Why doing... this was the time that they decided to do the reboot? I think I. You know what? Here's what I think happened. Uh, Paramount, which is the parent company of Viacom, I believe, um, came up to Mike Judge with a big bag of money and said, "Make another Beavis and Butthead movie for Paramount Plus." And he was like, "That whole thing for me." And when they said yes, he said, I'll do it. <laughs> is, is it me, or is Paramount Plus, like, almost trying to theme their content? It's, like, make it all space-themed. Um, <laughs> do, do you have a good amount of space stuff? I think that's just a happy coincidence, but um, maybe that is Mike Judge interjecting some uh, some satire yeah, into I... his... Uh, Satire. Who knows? <laughs> so they decided I to release this. Being very, very tongue in, like very kind of venomously tongue in cheek. If this was a mandate from from Viacom, mm -hmm. like we need you to promote our streaming service, please provide content. I yeah. think when they when they first popped up, they just started like handing out like checks and contracts to so many different. Like they signed South Park. Had no like a three three movie deal in several seasons or whatever. It was a massive deal to get more South Park out of them. And uh, probably along with that was all their other movies with like the Halo series. And uh, fuck, I don't know what else is on Paramount Plus, but just whatever to, you know, stock the books and get more tiles on the screen. Oh, Halo but, series is um ready for, for we'll be ready for our viewing. Um, whenever we want to throw that on the schedule. Yeah. Oh, great. I have to finish it? Let's go watch John Rings. You gotta, I gotta actually see his ass? Can't yeah, wait. I mean, I've, I've heard about that scene. And, um, you know, if Brian David Gilbert is to be believed, and I believe Brian David Gilbert, uh, he's pretty much chemically castrated. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna stop him, though, kids. Yeah, there's, uh, there's a lot, a lot I'm gonna have to say about the uh, the movie, and you know, I 
I'm gonna sound like a toxic fanboy, uh, and I'm only partially that. Sink but, into like, it, Jake. Give in. Give in to the hatred. Uh, like you're oh, a white like man a... threatened by change. Come on. Oh, oh, it is just, it is just like um, man, when you're when you're given a gift, and it's just wrapped in in turds, and just like and bad decisions. It's like it it. It's like old for loco, you know. Like you kind of feel good like, I, after or during. Like you, you're like, oh yeah, I'm gonna get drunk on four loco, and then you're like, oh, fuck, I had a. Now I know you meant four loco, loco original recipe, Jake. I know you meant four loco original recipe. Yeah, because we're old enough like... to have experienced that, you fucking zoomers. Yeah. But I, when you said old for loco, I immediately thought of. A four loco flavored old English. <laughs> like a forty of four like forty loco. Dude, I've yeah, I've no. gotten <laughs> I've drank myself to the point of being sick before, but nothing quite made it as sick as four loco. Like vomit never is pleasant coming up, but this was a different kind of beast. Yeah, if yeah. you were throwing up four loco. Like your body knew that this was the most heinous shit you'd ever put inside of it. And it wanted it out and out fast. Yeah, it's, it's just something the equivalent of pulling your sweaty sock off at the end of the day, and you have to kind of invert the whole thing. When when Four Loco like is giving you strong Necronomicon vibes, like that's when you probably should change things up for your consumers. So, I... huh. yeah, the uh, that man, I because I watched like the first three episodes of Halo and. Ooh, just not particular fan of like just the simple decisions. Like there's some nitpicking you can do. Like there's some really severe nitpicking. And there's even like fans who like said like diehard fans who said, "All right, you know what? They take off the helmet. So what? They show faces." And then they're like, "You know what? I could get past it the first couple times, but then there's a point where it's like, stop taking off the helmet." You're in a combat situation. <laughs> don't take off the helmet. <laughs> you don't take off the helmet. <laughs> the helmet stays on. Because Master Chief is not the only one who is like... Psh. And about that sex scene. Master Chief definitely is the kind of guy who says, no, the helmet stays on during. <laughs> Wait, so is there another butt scene? Because I was referring to one... I. So, are there multiple butt shots of Master Chief? I don't know. All I know is that... Master there Chief. multiple. I, I heard the, about... I saw the PC Gamer himself. article that said Master Chief definitely just had sex. And I was like, well, Brian David Gilbert tells me that's impossible. So, explain mm-hmm. yourself. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, dude. Kind of as snips, long as dude. I don't have to see his pillar of audio making a covenant with their Master Chief. <laughs> <laughs> you had that from the second we brought that up, and you've just been waiting. <laughs> Absolutely. I can, see. I, can, I can conceive of infinite <sighs> possibilities, because after all, anything's possible. Anything's you know, possible. It's, it's, I mean, it's probably not the first, but it's the first I can remember today. Uh, Zoomer romantic comedy. Mm-hmm. Well, there was that one where it was just like a regular rom com, but they were like in space. Oh, yeah. right, with the stowaway or whatever. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so this is. Yeah. <laughs> um, so. Uh, you want to tell me I'm is... wrong, bro? I think this I is did fine. Not, I did not catch the premise until like the end of the trailer. I was like. Wait, are are they? Is there? Are they really just making, like, just a like a rom com, but like with more colors? <laughs> Pretty much, they just, they just, they in, in more ways than colors. one. It's a rom com with more colors. That joke was uh, very poor taste. <laughs> by Orion. I, I think the uh, yeah, I, I think oh, that wow. the comments were more the com- the comments on the video was more along the lines of. Uh, People being shocked that Orion was still in business, um, <laughs> but mean, yeah. So anything possible. We got the a rom com, but with a, a trans teen. Um, 
Now, I wanted to see if, you know, this is going to be the big argument. I believe they got a trans actress. Wait. Uh, to play which her. Which one was trans? Um, the... Uh, love I, interest. Yeah. That girl? I think, I think that's Renee Today Lee Today we're going to paint a portrait. Pick a partner. Think? That's so good. Me, can I see yours? Renee Lee Stoll. Exactly. That is... They don't have for some reason they don't have her fucking uh like act like the character name on IMDb. Um, um no. Well okay, I'm looking I don't at think that's... Well Renee Lee yes. Goldsberry is definitely the girl in this? Or maybe she's just the mom. Yeah, fifty one. So she's not playing oh, the girl. Yeah. Oh no! Yeah, no, not her nail is All right, so uh, uh, it's Megan or some Simone of that. Joy. Oh no, wasn't her name it starts with a K or some of that? Oh yeah, there's uh, at the end they have someone's name pop up. Oh yeah, written by uh, Jimena Garcia, uh, Cuona. Simone Joan. Jo so that's okay. Yeah, this so might be like a based on a book thing. Simone Joy Jones is the girl. Young girl. Um, okay. IMDb mentions yeah. nothing about her being trans, which I'm sure if she was would be all over the fucking place. Um, so I guess it's the other lead. I mean, this is. I mean, it's not going to get me canceled, but it's. Um, she was definitely like cis passing. I guess is what you would call it. Um, she did not give strong stereotypical trans vibes other than she had a bit of a raspy voice but there are plenty of women out there with raspy voices like um, there was no like masculine like shoulders, masculine hands, Adam's apple yada 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 so um, I, I, I think the only reason why people would get upset is if she's not trans playing a trans character which is so dumb um i i think that's a dumb thing however i know people want you know as much diversity as they can and i think well, the trans have... market is definitely um an area that is i think lacking but then again there's also not a lot of trans characters yeah there's, in, there's in, not a lot, in a lot of media people <laughs> just in general like yeah it's, no it's exceptionally it... rare <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, no, I, mean, I think I'll, it's just like oh, the one you're... the one time like they do because I I everybody goes back to the um, oh shit, what's her name? Um, when Black uh, Scarlett Johansson was supposed to be playing like a trans person in some movie, everybody was like up in arms oh, about it. And no, she was supposed having... to be like paraplegic. Was she? Right? Well, maybe I think I have a different actress that was supposed to play. Um... Uh, um, somebody who was trans and was not the same as uh, not trans. Yeah, um, I remember that. And, but my, my counterpoint to that is that movie is probably only getting made because Scarlett Johansson agreed to star in it. So do you want the representation of the character or to just have a trans person in the role because and maybe not have it, the movie get made? Um now, like, I agree to a certain extent that it probably works better for a trans person to be cast in a trans role. Um, but it doesn't mean that another actor or actress couldn't do as good a job. And vice versa, you know? I mean, you can put a trans person in... In a straight role or a cis role, I guess would be the mm -hmm. the way to put that. As I, I think the the role should go to the person who is best suited to play the part, regardless of any other extenuating factor. Um, but anyway, yes, this is a Gen Z coming of age story. Follows uh, Kelsa, a confident high school girl who is trans. She navigates her senior year. Posted June second, so they waited a day. <laughs> they didn't do it right as Pride Month started. They waited a day. <laughs> we'll, we'll hold on. Let's slip it in just a second. 
Uh, yeah, they appear um, too exploitative. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it seems like a lot of uh, I've been seeing a lot more um, the companies coming out and doing. Are stuff there going to be? Are going to be musical numbers in this? Of course. A thousand. This one? Yes. Oh, I, I don't it looks know. like there will be. Um. Yeah. Sure. So. Like. Uh, unfortunately, I have to I have to, to call out what I perceive to be. Some some slight bigotry going on with the uh, like to dislike ratio on this this movie on the movie clips trailers trailer uh, two hundred and twenty two up to one point one k down. I know it's not like a great looking movie, but it's not a not a that ratio <laughs> looking movie. How are you seeing dislike numbers? Oh, yeah, I have the I have the return dislike extension Ooh. installed. Um. <laughs> He's got, he's got the skinny. So it's it's 222 up and 1,145 down. Down. I, I think this is going to... um I, I think this is probably going to have the same downfall as a lot of, like, young adult movies where they're, like... They just, like, ramp up some of the... uh Like, the toxicity and the evilness of, of certain characters... Uh, where they like have no need for it. So like they mentioned, he's dating you for woke points, and I'm just thinking, I'm like, who the fuck would ever like what high school student would like sacrifice their own like self image, like put anything at risk to get like quote woke points. Yeah, and like, like, uh... <laughs> no, like I mean, maybe, that, maybe they seem like so evil to do to do something that like that evil to somebody or like to. Expect of somebody. Well, we mentioned that when we funny. watched Coda, right? Like how cartoonishly mean the bullies were. Like no one's gonna pick on you for having deaf parents. Like what the yeah. fuck? <laughs> that was my issue with Stranger Things. Um, one of the, the the first couple episodes or something like that. Eleven was like being bullied by some kids, and like they were like, "Haha, your dad's dead. Haha, you're new to the school. Fuck you. You're, you're like." You have this emotional project. <laughs> who are you? You're different. Are you just Satan? <laughs> yeah, like, who the fuck? No, I... I would never. And, like, look, there were kids I fucking hated who had, like, parents that were deceased or, like, left on them. But I never, in my, my adolescent and teenage rage, which was immense, <laughs> bullied them or belittled them for their parent not being alive. Yeah. It's like it's like it's just so um, unbelievable, and and this this movie doesn't get any help for the fact that like also the all the actors seem like they're thirty and shouldn't be sixteen year old students in high school or whatever. Uh, but yeah, no, okay, that's that's the same issue. I guess this is not for us. It's a, a, a event, secret Avengers universe where Dear Evan Hansen comes in <laughs> at the yeah. end. I'd love that. I'd love that. We're gonna. I've come to talk to you about the Glee Initiative. <laughs> <laughs> we have all those returning characters. Hell yeah, they are. I don't think getting a reboot or something dun, like that. Dun, dun, dun. I kind of want to see like I want to see that where like the final season of Riverdale is just like they start assembling all the teen drama casts, like. They're going it's the back. crippled kid from Glee that just rolls out. They like they have to go back in time to the no, ancient you have to land go to the original. Hill. You have to go to the original crippled kid on teen drama. Gotta go up north to Canada on the grassy and get Drake out in his wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were gonna say the 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 black kid from Malcolm in the Middle. <laughs> it's a black kid on that show. Oh. <laughs> Shit, y'all remember the, 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 the OC? The what now? Sorry. The OC? Oh, yes, I remember the OC. I have somewhere, maybe even in this house, the uh, <laughs> Chrismica album. California! <laughs> Here, Here comes! Come. <sighs> yeah. Oh, wow. Why did I skip that one? <laughs> What'd oh, you say? oh, believe me, I, 
I tried. We we, we tried. Yeah, oh. I, we were not into the OC, but Peter and I both have older sisters, mm-hmm. and they laugh that oh, shit and up. We lived. You lived in a. T- we lived in a time where you watched what was on. Yep. You 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 kids these days don't know what it was like back before you could watch anything ever at, on any streaming service. You had to you had to sit there and watch the television at a specific time to see a show, or you could dust off what was called a VCR and pop in a video cassette and record with commercials a show. That's right, baby. Oh. I think I was more of a Growing Pains kid. Growing Pains? I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure you had. Isn't that just like a... and the access? I'm not yeah. gonna. We're not. I'm not digging up my th- my three channel sob story again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was like that, and like Family Matters and stuff like that. Oh well, no, no, we're, those those are just family sitcoms. What we're referring to is like fucking. Teen drama, teeny bopper, with, soap with hunky boys, and they're like giving each other looks yeah, over the yeah, hill. Luckily, your One Tree Hills, your OCs, your Dawson's Creeks, your uh, Seventh Heaven, even Seventh Heaven, seventh I seventh guess seventh Gilmore seventh. Girls, or, kind or, or, of. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I consider Gilmore Girls one of them. Yeah, yeah. Um. Well. <laughs> None, none of those are trailers this week, so... No, but you know who but, is? The man <clears throat> from Toronto. From Toronto. Man, um, Toronto. 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 Uh, they couldn't, could not get Rock? Or no, Rock was uh, busy. The classic Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart rock roll. Uh, so they got a different bald white guy. Well, <laughs> different bald guy. I guess the Rock's not white. Rock is not even... Oh. No, he's... He's black and Samoan. He's Asian, I guess. <laughs> Was he white passing? He's white passing. <laughs> he looks Polynesian uh, white at his love white his daddy. <laughs> <laughs> We gave him the white person pass. So, like, yeah. He's cool with us. Um, yeah, so, while well, our boys in IGB are up in Toronto, Kevin Hart is, uh, is not. And Woody Harrelson's in it. And it's a Netflix movie. And it's a comedy that should tell you all you need to know about how it looks. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah, it, I mean, it is, like, it's from the guy who made the Hitman's Bodyguard. When you said the man, when you said Kevin Hart, I immediately thought of Kevin Owens. And to have Kevin Owens be the actual man from Toronto. I mean, he might have a problem with it because he's from Quebec. And the <laughs> French Canadians don't like the rest of the Canadians very much. True, that is true. Um, but but he would have been funnier know. than yes. Maybe I don't know. I'm trying to think. Who, I'm now. I'm not now. My brain's just scanning for Canadian wrestlers. Oh, there's like a ton of them. Natasha, Any of the hearts? The hearts. Yeah, you, Kevin Hart. Chris Kevin Jericho. Owens and Owen Hart. It's the triangle of power. Oh, that makes sense. Um, Christian Edge. Case of. <laughs> It's your, it's your, it's a movie Jinder about a, Mahal. Uh, uh, Jinder Mahal. A movie about a a, a case of uh, classic mistaken identity. Uh, and and Kevin it's Hart is like uh, definitely not. <laughs> yeah. Do you feel that like Kevin Hart's been like like super like uh, typecasted as like just the buffoon? He's just... he is currently in money. Are you asking me right now? if Kevin Hart, the man who has made a career of playing this one character has been typecast. Yeah. I think he may yes. have been, yes. <laughs> um, well, I, I, I hope the uh, endless piles of cash will be able to dry up his tears. I, f- I feel like, yeah, he, he sleeps on a bed made entirely of money. I think he'll be okay. Um, this, I'm sure this will there's jokes in this movie. Look, I'll there's say this. Funny to be oh, had. They, they put all it the looks, jokes in the trailer. It looks better than Thunder Force. I will give it that. 
Okay, yes. Which, we, granted, we, might be damning it with faint praise, but it is praise nonetheless. It's a low bar. Um, this could be one of the... You know, this goes in the folder marked trailers you can put before Tropic Thunder. <laughs> like the fake movies pretty, that they yeah. showed in, in Tropic Thunder? Yeah. For sure. Possibly Except, coming to a masterpiece theater near you. I wish Woody Harrelson just had a more Canadian accent. I want him to have that full... I want him to have that full-on... Canadian accent. That's not. Wait, that's that's North Midwestern. That's that's Hoosier, uh, Wisconsin. Well, um, I mean, it depends. Different parts of Canada have different accents, just like different parts of America have different accents. If you go, I want to that like, great white North energy coming off of him. He skipped oh, out no. on the the the, cla- the classes from uh, Mike Myers. Otherwise, mm-hmm. otherwise he'd be he'd be a shoe in for it. Like, uh, yeah, I'm not getting banned from, from Toronto. Toronto. <laughs> oh my god. If, they, they need to put him in more stuff. Man cares about oh. his career too much to I, sully himself with yeah. wonderful I projects. Pentaveret like had a few jokes in it that were okay, but I I didn't finish it. That that tells you how yeah. much it grabbed me. Mm-hmm. Pentaveret. There is one. It's like the concept of it. I mean, like, really there was some good concept. stuff in there, but Sorry, what was that, Peter? We've been talking. There's about a there is one really bad shot in this trailer. I, oh, I'm just trying the to one? scrub around <laughs> to find it. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's the one where the car, the Camaro, pulls up and hits the guy. Oh and yes, yeah. It's the god awful CGI of them, which they tried to hide behind the quick cut. Oh my okay. god, yeah, fuck. <laughs> I need to watch that again. I'm gonna fucking go frame by frame on that shit. That's rough. That's rough. They they like. <laughs> it's like they like turn them. I'm putting on, fly... put on quarter speed, baby. So so I they going, turn them into a I'm going board. frame by frame, and it's it's the real guy. Actually, he's on a green screen the entire time when you break it down. Um, because his legs are not fucking properly blended to the lighting of the scene, and then it's one frame. You see the car enter. Two frames, cars in the frame again. He's stepping back. Three frames, cars getting close to hitting him. Four frames, cars about to hit him. Five frames, car hits him. Uh, the character model does not move position at all. What they do is they rotate his cutout and his green screen about 12 degrees counterclockwise and darken <laughs> the fucking. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the color. Oh, that's so bad. And then the car's hitting him. <laughs> it's just fucking. I'm, I'm... He goes from standing to ninety degrees in a single fucking frame. Yeah. <laughs> it's so he, fucking bad. He's bent in a fucking L shape. Oh, that's so. I love. That. I don't even Those think that's his fucking out, leg. In the... degrees. And it's Kevin so... Hart like goes to fucking. <laughs> Kevin Hart like goes to fucking jack off or some shit. <laughs> his hand just goes up to his crotch. <laughs> oh, you see, your movie sucks. That's how you do that. <laughs> That's how you make that kind of video entertaining. Uh, well, now they, that we've they should have played into it a little bit more. They should have been like, yeah, no, we know. Insert, have have a cutaway. Insert car crash here. Like uh, that's how I would do that effect, but I'm an amateur with no budget. Right. We would be able to get away with the cheeky, the cheeky no budget uh, solution. Um, Yeah. It takes devotion to be that bad. Much like now that we've, yeah. How many pips is that? How many pips? Okay. All right. The take. Yeah, devotion. (laughs) <laughs> did we talk about this last week? I don't think we did. We talked about it in the theater over the weekend on the way to yeah. watch Bob's Burgers. I don't believe we talked about it on there, but it's it's a war fighter pilot movie. Mm-hmm. It don't look bad. It don't look great either. Um, 
next up in a movie cast entirely by people who are who are getting a lot of work recently. <laughs> it's <laughs> The Menu, starring Anna Taylor, Taylor Joy, Joy, who's just everywhere, and Ralph Fiennes, who's also seemingly everywhere lately. <laughs> Ralph Fiennes. He's hot right now. And it's... Is, is it me, or is, like... Haute cuisine culture, the new like horror genre. I mean, I think it's always been right for that. Like we can go, we can go back as far as Fallout New Vegas with the uh, the Ultralux and the White Glove Society. They were all cannibals, and they were all like. Fun I think I think people. that's where it probably stems from. Is that whenever you see like a horror food movie, it's always like, oh my god, are they going to eat people? There's always that innate suspense of like, yeah, and cannibalism is inherently people. like unsettling to people. Like, yeah. it really so. <laughs> Don't eat people, okay? Well, wait, is that John Leguizamo in there? Yes, I did see him. I spotted, I spotted a John Johnny L. Is he in there to die first? Um, I hope not. No, he's, him and, he's lost on his way back to the Mushroom Kingdom. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Char- he's got to beat Charlie Day there. He he got the um, he got the mushrooms for them. <laughs> yeah, why the fuck? Why the fuck is Charlie Day playing Luigi when he had John Leguizamo ready to reprise the role? Uh, it was right there. Uh, I, I love John Leguizamo in this movie is appropriately playing the character movie star. <laughs> yeah, excellent. Uh, yeah, so this is, like, this is going under art, I'm putting this under art horror, which isn't That's just, fair. like, artsy-flavored horror, but, like, horror about fine art. <laughs> oh, I like this guy at 31 seconds. He he reminds me of Stanley Tucci. <laughs> Except Tucci. with more hair. And that makes sense to me. You know, it, it activates my subliminal yes. neurons when I see Stanley Tucci lookalikes <laughs> in a in a food setting. Yeah, he looks getting a strong little, Tucci little, vibes. Little passing resemblance of the Tucci. It's 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 deep. It's deep Freudian connections. <laughs> um, I just see the yeah, Tucci so... making his vegetarian lasagna in his Tuscan garden. <laughs> It and seems I, like I, I don't know what the what out. the overarching plot. So this is well, this is a teaser at least, I guess, of this movie. So we don't yeah. fully know the plot. I mean, you can infer, get some yeah. pretty good the ideas. The musical cue uh, suggests that things are not as they seem, and it is <laughs> is possibly a a scheme to literally eat the rich. Would be my guess. Could be. Could be, could be literally the rich. Could be, uh, could be. I got hunting vibes from them, like hunt, like hunt them for sport. Most, yeah, um, you know. Seems like they're trapped in this the little. Mo- Tell me, I mean, the food is definitely people. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, they're eating people. I ate the people. It's people, stupid. <laughs> people are made out of food. <laughs> but if, what if they're actually eating the poor? They're, they're all okay with it. <laughs> and this is actually, I, like, funded by billionaires. Well, if like, you no, believe Vampire the Masquerade the bloodlines, then the poor people yeah. don't taste as good. <laughs> Money is a good tenderizer. Now, I'm not yeah. saying that it's special or anything to have a virgin blood, but I think you'd understand that you your sandwich wouldn't quite taste as good if someone had a penis in it. <laughs> I feel like, you know, if you were going to eat a sandwich, you'd want to know someone hadn't fucked it. (laughs) I don't know. The liver king has always eaten testicles, and I'm starting to think he's onto something. So, All right. I've heard this name. This name is Ring a Bell. The liver king? Yes. Tell us about the liver king, Jake. The liver king is a... Please tell us about the uh, liver king. uh, I I, I mean, he, he got famous... Like through other means, but he popped off on TikTok and just based pretty much every social media site now where he pops off on. He's just a roided out jerk who just and does crazy lifts and uh, is just has the worst mentality of like 
the alpha male mentality, but he's also like uh, the what the prehistoric male basically. Uh, and ancestors. Oh. It's a whole gimmick to sell supplements. Uh, and his right. his whole his name behind him, the Liver King, is because he eats liver like daily. The Liver King sounds like a fucking Elden Ring boss. Yeah, it does. It does, and he probably is, and he actually <laughs> looks like one. Not far from it. I would have to I roll can't. to dodge his attacks of swinging livers his at me. Big wind up swings. <laughs> his big wind up liver swings. <laughs> and do you and think his like... second stage is he takes off the weights that he has on his body. Do you think they're like healthy livers or are they all just like what my liver looks like, oh. I'm sure? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think they're human livers. Uh, my guess is beef. That's disappointing. Um, <laughs> just well, like I wouldn't Pinocchio, be surprised if he's tried. I'm sure it will be disappointing. Oh, is it a coincidence that we got two Pinocchios in like the same year? Um, no, get that everyone. I, thing, I so. feel like it just came in. They, Disney finally lost. They they lapsed in their copyright. And well, that's what happened with Winnie the Pooh. That's why we're getting Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. <laughs> Honey. Yeah, I love it. Um, I can't wait for that shit. Um, it's the next in the line of Disney live action remakes. In a in a month where funnily enough, uh Peter and I have been clowning on the live action heavier quotes for those of you not watching the video podcast, Lion King. <laughs> yeah. Uh um, they're they're ready to do it again and make a million dollars. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna sell a billion because of course it will. It's it's a Disney remake, no matter how bad they are. Uh, they always seem to do about a billion. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess the the only question on my mind is uh, which background character that are they gonna make gay this time? Jiminy. Jiminy. Well, based off his uh, CG, yeah, he's really gay. Incredibly gay. Why or, you know what? You could make Pinocchio blaming. gay. Like, Pinocchio didn't have, like, a love interest, did he? Yeah, no. He, he did have some friends at the carnival. Yeah, you could make him gay. Man, you could make Pinocchio gay pretty easily. In fact, you know, if you watch the original Pinocchio, you kind of get a heavy gay vibe coming off of him. And the, that's he's how, talking about how much he wants to be a real boy. His nose grows. <laughs> I think see, the thing is, Last... I think they already did that with Pinocchio, a true story. Yeah. Oh, you, you got it before me. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, I still refuse to believe that this movie is real. It is real. I, I actually know some background to it. Um, so. <laughs> This was done that. by like some. I'm this was like freak. a movie that came out a couple years ago, I think. Um, and it got re-edited and voiced by a Polly Shore for a U.S. release, I believe it is. Um, because I think it was originally came out in like um, Ukraine. It was like the studio that did it. Um, it was it was bad? It was really bad. Even even like the original one was was bad uh but there was a lot of so like it's littered with like mistranslations and uh just not sure why paulie shore decided to uh because voice paulie it the way shore he did. has no other options and he's not very talented yeah. um uh, but yeah apparently like uh, like if you so somebody did a whole review and they sat through it and uh and, and bared it um but it like it did not make sense. Like the plot of it was not all there, so there might have been like mistranslation with the U.S. version as well. So to paraphrase uh, Canadian legend Jean Lajoie, Pauly Shore is easily forgettable, and he's not very liked. There's also this is not the same Pinocchio story that we know. So this is like for some reason there's like, like fruity Pinocchio or or this Pinocchio. fruity Pinocchio is supposed to be like you don't know the real story you've been lied to by the mainstream media 
you only know fake news Pinocchio. I'm going to tell you the real Pinocchio story. But only after you buy my cat. supplements. Yeah, yeah. It We've got the finest nutraceuticals. It involves a, uh, a, a mean fairy godmother, whatever the fuck it is, who likes to be a recluse, lives alone. It's just like each easily approachable. Yeah, live uh, action Pinocchio. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's got Tom Hanks in it as Geppetto, so yay. Oh, Joseph Gordon Levitt playing Jiminy Cricket? Sure. Fine. Sure. Um, it's the it's what you do with these Disney live action remakes. You get a couple recognizable celebrities to play a few parts, and then you make a billion dollars. It's, it's how it goes. It's what it is. It's what it yeah. do. It makes a lot of money. And you could say that uh, these all of all the Disney properties form a kind of joint economic area. Uh, this trailer that I'm about to segue into, that I'm currently segueing into, came as has dropped within the span since we started recording. <laughs> this is this say, is live. This. this is live on is tape air set waves. Um, the most original movie title I've ever seen. Money Heist. Korea. Korea, right. Money, Money Heist, Heist, colon Korea, dash joint economic area. Because there was another Money Heist movie, right? Maybe. Or it was a show or something like that? I think it was a Netflix show. I know it was Money Plane. Yeah. That's a different thing entirely. But no, Money Heist, I believe, it's coming back to me. It was a Netflix show, and um, some people liked it. I remember people at, uh, well, not my last company, when I worked at Coherent, talking in the break room about Money Heist and how it was good. So now, uh, Netflix has been a uh, proprietor of the uh, Korean market with Squid Game. They're wedding the two concepts together. Yes. Um, this is Grand the Grand ultimate Grand team up Grand movie where Grand North and South Grand Korea Grand will Grand have Grand to team up to save the hostages from the, from the money heist. Because they're gonna steal the money out of both Koreas. <laughs> Was that the plot of fucking, uh, home front? where a united korea teams up with china to invade the u.s i believe that's that is the penal history playbook there yes um so um it's it's korean that's that's yeah there was say. a there's a couple of money heists um back in like I, i'm seeing the earliest one from like 2017 which is money heist uh, it's got a lot of foreign names on it. I don't know if it's like Spanish or French. Ursula Corbero. Um, and then there was Money Heist Korea that we know about. Money Heist from Tokyo to Berlin. Money Heist the Phenomenon. And I don't... This isn't Money Heist. Why did you give me this IMDb? Uh, yeah. So there, there might, there's probably a long lot of it. So hey, Money Heist Korea. Cool. Now we move uh, on. Just like the princess is cool. Oh shit! I forgot about this. You forgot the best one. We've been saving the best for last. It's not your it. normal princess story. She's got a sword. Is it the legendary Daikatana? <laughs> <laughs> but man, a redhead princess who fights back. I've oh, never yeah. heard this before. Here you go, Kerr. This is a uh, protagonist, redhead. It's never uh, been redhead girls, Jake. They have plenty of good representation. Oh, oh it's the redhead males. Yes, the um, redheaded man um, up there. We got nothing. All of these bad guys are brunettes or black hair, so... Hear me yeah, I'm just saying right. we make up like 1% of the global population. Yet we seem to make up about 50% of movie villains. 
Is oh, it because we commit more villainry? I don't think so. You should, be, you should be flattered because a lot of people like the Dark Knight because of the Joker, and he's a villain. So sometimes the villains make the movie. <laughs> but he he he's literally had the property. opposite of red hair. He it's had true. green hair. No, I'm not making a direct comparison to hair color. I'm just saying sometimes the villains make the movie. Jake's argument destroyed with facts and logic. <laughs> Green is not red. <laughs> oh no! So let's say let's say hypothetically, for example, that that we had a princess that fought back in in a in a traditional uh, medieval movie, and say and say also for example that we played uh, Joan Jett's bad reputation in a montage over that. Would you conclude <laughs> that this would be possibly maybe like Shrek? I was thinking like Brave. <laughs> All right, Ben Shabibo. <laughs> When you said about the princess that fights back, I thought brave, which just furthers the point that this is not an original idea. Yeah, Yeah. nope, Uh, not not really. Um, Like that was like gallivanted this this fucking twist on the the princess bride stuff. Even the fucking princess bride did a twist on the princess. Star Wars, you could say, would argue that the uh, princess, the badass princess, was like breaking the mold for the trendsetter. Yeah, fucking Kill Bill. <laughs> Dude, we can just keep listing movies that are more Alien. original than this. <laughs> she wasn't a princess. I'll be princess. <laughs> oh. That's the princess. So. Get your wallets ready. <laughs> Money laundering. Um, the, from the princess, we have the bear. Um, this oh, is. Shit, there's more fun. <laughs> don't worry. This is this is the last one I know of. Um, and I'll keep it short. There, it's it's about it's an FX Hulu original. It's it's FX, but it's only on Hulu. Um, so tell me how that works, Batman. Um, it's about a restaurant in a city, and he's trying to make the restaurant work. And it's it's sassy chefs, and they're all bantering, and it's like funny, but then it's drama. So yeah, I kind of love FX this. I kind of love this concept though because um, I just remember the time when I was a cook, a fry cook in a kitchen, and. Uh, I look back on that time as a very transformative time in my life. I don't want to go back to. Uh, I was a very bad person. In I was kitchen. a piece of shit, though. Like, on the... Oh, well, so I was no, the... No, you, I... say, you say bad person, but bad person in the kitchen is a, quite a spectrum. Like, the chef spectrum runs a, a wide variance. How, how I... bad was this? Okay, I was not as bad as like your stereotype. I don't think like people actually spit on food or like like will actually do stuff to your food. Like if somebody sends something back, like I, there's just lines that you don't cross. And if there is somebody that that, waiting lied to me, (laughs) (laughs) yes, Uh, yes, nobody is scratching dandruff as garlic. Ryan Reynolds is not a liar, um, sir. (laughs) I mean, you would. You work at a kitchen, you shouldn't be surprised when you get orders for food and you have to do work. But every single time, <laughs> oh, we would get so mad. You want me to <laughs> like, do my job? People, yes, and it was like we would have like you would have you could have calm for like two hours straight, be bored out of your mind. The second something comes in, you are cussing them out something foul. And uh, I've seen people snap. Uh, I've seen people come, not be able to come in because they were too high. Um, you know, I believe. get high out in the. Yeah, you know, it's just it's just that place. I've had an old man scream to me in my face, and like I was this this. I'm not an aggressive person. This close, this close to assaulting a man. Um, oh, yeah. it was uh, it was a Chef different fights. time. The pressure's high. And those kitchens are like 117 degrees, like constant throughout the summer. Mm-hmm. 
And you you get you get into some uh, some debates. Some, yes, uh, Peter and I know the unpleasantness of working next to uh, ovens in the summer. <laughs> I can at least vouch for that much. No. Um, but yeah, no. Okay, so I that that's yep, that's chef life. <laughs> Chef life is different, so I'm, I'm kind of interested to see this actually. All right, um, I want to see some. Well, on that note, we end tray watch unceremoniously before any t- more trailers can be brought up. The <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> exactly. decision is being made. <laughs> We're moving on to the follow up. <laughs> oh, but one just dropped, guys. No. <laughs> the Disney celebration trailer. Daddy around. says no. <laughs> All right. Domestic. Weekend, 21, May 27th through 30th, 2022. Memorial Day weekend, long weekend. Uh, Taking the top spot over the long weekend was Top Gun Maverick, bringing in an impressive $160.514 million in 4,700 theaters, which is a good 900 more than the second place. Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, which brought in a, another $20 million over this long weekend um, in its fourth week. Opening in third, our feature presentation for this week, uh, the Bob's Burgers movie, bringing in a respectable $14.8 million in its opening weekend. Uh, Downton Abbey, A New Era, in its second week, dropped three spots, or I'm sorry, uh, two spots down to fourth seven point four million dollars for its trouble um the bad guys which i believe is out on video on demand now is hauling in another five point six million dollars everything everywhere all at once which will be on vod i think this month and it's 10th week still bringing in a respectable 3.2 million dollars where did this land at? Where are we at on this? Well, I think the last time we talked about it, it made about $57 million worldwide. It's now up to $77.5 million worldwide. That'd be good. So, yeah, it's it's had a, a late resurgence. E24 it's got late, is, uh, as they said. E24 is putting out some content. As they often do. Mm-hmm. Man, so, man was a slip. Man, man was a bit of a slip, but they, they've had some good stuff come out. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 brings in $3.1 million in its eighth week. Um, very respectful for Sonic 2. And it's looking at that nice $386 million haul, which is uh, pretty damn good. The yeah. Lost City. Somehow this movie is still in the top ten. Ten weeks for this random fucking romantic comedy adventure movie. I don't get uh, it. Like we gotta watch that. This it's gotta be incredible, right? To have this kind of legs. Like this movie made fucking a hundred eighty-one million dollars worldwide. It's kind of that's that's really actually impressive. There's uh, gotta be something to this, right? That's yeah, that's fucking incredibly impressive. That's more than twice as much as more billions made. <laughs> oh, don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Him he saying knows, he's right? morbid time I, and morbid all those swear guys. To God, we tried Morbin over the weekend. I tried Morbin. You tried Morbin? We did. Yeah. But the, the version we had wasn't very good. I've since acquired a higher quality version of Morbin. And we're gonna we're gonna watch it. We're gonna shout it's Morbin time and then we're gonna morb all our drinks while he morbs all those guys. So I'm I'm glad you I'm glad you brought this up. This uh, I want to do a PSA. Um, beware, uh, fellow TikTokers out there. There are some bad actors that are trying to force you to morb uh, by condensing the movie Morbius into five second snippets, into a five second snippet, and then flashing it in front of you in the middle of a TikTok, and then they say you just watch Morbius. So some people don't want to watch Morbius, and they're just morbid people. Um, so watch out on the streets. If it's late at night, walk with a friend. Uh, <laughs> just people are getting morbed. I just don't want to see anybody. Getting it's a morbed weird with convulsions that, of those nature. Vigilante morbs. <laughs> it's a weird convulsions of nature, which is a very apt metaphor that, uh, in my life at least, that the person who tweeted out the morbid time thing 
is ranked 10 Yu Gi Oh! <laughs> yeah, it's um, and and Morbin time, it, it sometimes is Morbin time, sometimes it's not. Some it's Morbin time most of the time, I feel it's Morbin times a lot of the time, let's be honest. Like 95% of the time, you can be doing some Morbin. Um, <laughs> man <laughs> slips to ninth in its second week, 1.5 million dollars for the. As we found out last week, much maligned movie. Yeah. And rounding up the top ten, yet catapulting into our spotlight is F three Fun and fun Frustration, opening in tenth with a one point one nine five million dollar weekend in just four hundred theaters, though. So it brought in nearly three thousand dollars a theater, which is pretty good. These Bollywood movies tend to do pretty good per theater take. Which makes you wonder why more theaters don't carry them. <laughs> but but man, cross gates will have it. Oh yes, they will. And perhaps, probably not though, because these don't stay in theaters for very long. Perhaps coming to a masterpiece theater near you. Um, Could try and see uh, the adventures of Benki and Varun. Yes, F three has. No media outlet reviews other than IMDb, on which it holds a 5.8 out of 10. Oh, buddy. But that's all we need, because as we know, the real reviewers hang out in the IMDb user review sections. And if you ever need the scoop on a movie, that is the place to go. Um, for example, uh, R.D. Hantika has a 10 out of 10 review titled Nice. Okay. Uh, nice. <laughs> Submitted May 27, 2022. Nice movie. Totally funny. Crying eyes emoji. Tongue out emoji. A winking tongue out emoji. And enjoyable. Popcorn emoji. Film real emoji. Movie. <laughs> Every age group person can see this movie. Young or aged, all will be happy after seeing this movie. Nice presentation by Venki and Verone. And this movie is full of comedy and totally based on money. Paid out 23 times that <laughs> um, Now, I want to know what this is. So, <laughs> I'll have to look it up maybe after or uh, after I'm done reading this. Uh, 1 out of 10. By Abul Javid Sheikh. Please carry Sustri Balm with you. Surely it's a delight to watch if you are having a disturbed day at your work or frustrated only you can enjoy this bloody movie to the fullest. Oh, was it British? Maybe it should be like. If your chill mood and wants to spend some quality time watching a movie, then strictly avoid this isn't worth your quality time. This isn't the sequel of F2, but it has the same characters that that of F2. This movie had complete different story, or you can tell senseless story with senseless comedy. The director tried something new which didn't work well, with, and the shocking news is at the end of the movie, you will get to know that, our, that they're planning F4 as well, which I'm going to watch. Not going to watch. About a six found that helpful. Oh, the um, I forgot the title of that in the beginning. Please carry Sastri Balm with you. I believe it is a traditional Hindu, like a salve, like a like a pain relieving cream. Okay. Okay. I I put up the link to a Google so, search. So so Jake, it. I couldn't help but notice you started out with a an accent and then said oh maybe they're british and changed accents am i to believe that they said attempted... bloody oh you know india was a british colony until like the 60s right yeah, they don't say bloody yes they do that's how they learned english they heard learned the uk style of english well this guy I don't know, do, man. didn't do a good enough job i guess there's yeah, a lot I'm of pretty sure a lot of game, capitals right? Like they just split off from South America and they just they sailed the entire continent <laughs> over to over to Southern Asia. 
pretty sure they did that. That was like in the 50s, right? I think they called Something that like that, yeah. The Cuban Revolution. I think so. There was a crisis <laughs> involving missiles, as I recall. Yeah, yeah, because they couldn't find enough missiles to put on to their. Yeah, they the needed they needed more to missiles to, to to propel them into South Asia. Yeah. And when they said when they left, they say, "I'll be gone, D." <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. That was their not. That was the nonviolent uh, protest. Was that they just left. They took the and, whole country and, and they left. And they, they used up violent armaments in the process. It was double nonviolence. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I gotta go read a I gotta go read a four out of ten now. <laughs> um the middle now, this is a polarizing, divisive movie. Though the middle ones were thin on the ground, by which I mean there were no four or five there were no five or six star reviews. Um but we do have this 4 out of 10 from uh, Morali Chikala. Uh, worse than Javardash comedy. Uh, to be honest, Anil let us down with this silly and forced comedy. Too silly, guys. The story is illogical and outdated. Even Venki's facial expressions during comedy scenes were routine and annoying. However, Varun's performance was good with his body expressions. Bottom line, F3 is just a shadow of F2. No one. No, no, no one. Zero out of zero, baby. But, like, uh, it's a, he, did, this man is, this person is uh, criticizing F3 for being too silly. I don't want to. I don't want to say it in a weird way, but why do all these Bollywood movies have just, like, lettered numeral names? Like, F2, Triple R. <laughs> I think I... Baseless conjecture. Absolute fucking fire in the dark. Um, They want to be able to get they have the you know the recognizable name of like an acronym so not a super long mm. name um plus using english characters because and this isn't even i don't even think this is like an indian thing this is just a marketplace of the world thing is if you take your product and put english words on it it will do better <laughs> everyone people love the fucking english words on their movies and shit you put you will put English words anywhere. It's like Hagen Das, where <laughs> but in reverse. Um, but they don't want to actually have to say English words, so they're just like it's F three. <laughs> Manish Gavin has a ten out of ten review. Ignore negativity. Many period ellipse. It's a fun fair, actually. A much-awaited movie, F3, has finally arrived in our nearest theaters, ellipses. And in my opinion, it's really good in terms of comedy and humor, second ellipses. Yes, there are some over-the-top visuals in comedy, another ellipses, yet can be pacified by Vinky Mama's acting. Four period ellipses. Surprisingly, for, uh, there have been no like, clear sentence breaks so far. Surprisingly... Ron Tej tried his best and did show his acting potential in the movie. Another ellipses. First half was good and second half was a bit slow in screenplay, yet was entertaining. Another ellipses. Tamana was really good. Another ellipses. Mehran was okay. Yet another ellipses. And it's a different number of periods each time, seemingly. Twist in the climax wasn't unexpected. Another ellipses. Anali could have replaced it with any other situation. Another ellipses. Star hero section were the best parts in the movie and were the funniest. Another ellipses. Tamana playing as a boy was unexpected. Ellipses. Climax fight was the best. Ellipses. Screenplay was loud. Ellipses. And editing was smooth. Ellipses. Ignore negativity and logics in this movie. Ellipses, as it is irrelevant for a comedy movie. Period. 
theory. That, okay. that, is, that whole paragraph, technically, is one giant run on sentence. It's just, it's got so much emphasis, though, with all the ellipses. I, I guess <laughs> that's what you yeah, want. So much, um, periods. so much drama. I mean, I guess technically an ellipse is a period, so you could argue that it is a new sentence started with an ellipse <laughs> on the four period ones. So, you got a one out of ten from Lathema Lath, or Lalith Lalith male. So many eyes and L's. I cannot. Lalith male Mally Pilly. <laughs> Sorry, Get that was pill. hard. Uh, nothing but forced comedy. I like that too, to be honest. But it wasn't a great Jake. thing. It had... <laughs> what? Stop you right there. <laughs> it's, I, I like their culture. It, impersonation <laughs> is not racist. It's not. It is when it's not that good. <laughs> this person is... Uh, Indian, so I just want to read it like they would be typing. You don't know so, that for uh, sure. <laughs> like they would be typing. <laughs> I'm just trying to give, I'm just trying to put us in the mood if we were actually in India reading this over their shoulder as they were typing it. Then we'd be like, well, thank you. Thank you for this uh, opportunity to come into your home. I liked, fine, I'll do it normal voiced. I liked F2 to be honest. While it doesn't, while it wasn't a great film, it had elements that were that were enough to make people laugh, thirdly giving a good refreshment overall. F three laughs lacks those elements too. All the cast were made to do forced comedy, and it didn't have elements to make us laugh. I feel F three wasn't isn't a worthy watch at all. Better to skip it. Eleven out of fifteen. Not that helpful. Uh, finally. Finally, for all this time, um, I'm gonna see if I can't do my my best like Microsoft Sam or like generic the genericest voice. I am here to talk to you about a review. Hello, Mario. Uh, from Sergian Sergian Sahu. Oh, um, seven out of ten. Not great, but not bad at all. If you really like comedy movie, then this movie is perfectly for you. The whole cast section is just amazing, but comedian uh, St- uh, Satya's character presence is little is little bit lesser, but he is the upcoming comedy star of Tollywood, and he done the good job in this film. Tollywood. After a long time, Sunil all back their own comedy track I like most. Film climax was a little bit disappointing. Request viewer to put your logic sense in your home before going to watch this film. Overall, good attempt by director Anil Sear. Two out of two out of six. <laughs> yeah, the the one downside. Take those of the video words home here. with you. Request viewer to put your logic sense in your home before going to watch uh, this film, which I'm pretty sure is I, if I'm if I'm actually like trying to, you know, uh, syntax this, I'm. I think it was, please, viewer, leave your logic at home before going to watch the movie. That seems like a request that they might make. Um, yeah, so that's F3. And uh, that's also the follow-up as we move on to gaming news. And a uh, pretty, pretty newsworthy week this week. Um, although I will admit to uh, not grabbing all of these stories that I, I possibly could have. Um, I will claim it was in the interest in time, and, and not just because I didn't start preparing for the show until 20 minutes before we started recording. Um, a cyberpunk cat adventures called Stray gets a gameplay trailer and a July release date. Uh, guide a cat through a dangerous cyberpunk city this summer. Uh, <laughs> I feel like my girlfriend is going to bake me to buy her this video game. Uh, we finally got a nice look at Stray, the third person cyberpunk adventure game from Blue 12 Studio and Anna Per 
during the interactive at Sony's State of Play presentation. Um, it is a PlayStation exclusive, it appears. Um, it will, oh, I'm sorry, no, straight release on Steam on July 19th, but it will also be on the PS5. Um, it actually looks pretty interesting. Uh, the cyberpunk elements are very much like, uh, Kamigawa Neon Dynasty style cyberpunk and not like Cyberpunk 2077 cyberpunk. Mm -hmm. I think I've seen I think I've seen some early like um, screenshots of it. Uh, yeah, it, it looks uh, it looks fun, kind of neat, different. Uh, and th but the whole thing is that there's no humans in the in, um, in the world. Yeah, you see a robot, the humanoid robot, but yeah, I don't think you see a person. Like, person. Yeah, there's like mostly robots or something. Yeah, right? I don't think robots you see... or some, some shit like that. Yeah, there doesn't seem to be any people in the trailer. Um, perhaps that's what the cat is looking for. The people. Because it wants churches. Um, it wants that cat food. Spire, it's happening, folks. It's not a drill. Uh, um, Insomniac Spider Man is coming to the PC. It's happening. Uh, Peter Parker, Miles Morales, both both versions coming to the game. It will supposedly support ray tracing, as it did ray tracing kind of on the PS5 port of it, um, for whatever ray tracing capabilities the, the PS5 has. I think it's running an AMD GPU, which is uh, not mm -hmm. the best for ray tracing. Um, Marvel Spider-Man hit the PS4 in 2018 and was praised for being generally awesome. And uh, while several Sony's P planned PC ports have been teased in advance or leaked in the, in the NVIDIA GeForce Now database, uh, Spider-Man was not among them. It is one of Sony Pictures' most treasured characters and a box office cash cow. And uh, similarly, a powerhouse in their gaming division. Um, it will be dropping... On August 12th, 2022, under the name Spider-Man Remastered. Um, uh, it's, it's exciting times. I, I said when God of War got announced, good. Now do Spider-Man so I don't have to buy your <laughs> fucking console. Because those are the two games oh, yeah. I wanted to play on it. Yep. Um, <laughs> very, very hyped. Yeah, a lot of stuff coming out of the state of play. Um, I see here yet another... Ur urban motion simulator <laughs> this time with guns roller dome which i'm pretty sure was they just took the game zina or zina from like the mid 2000s real super niche indie game where you rode around on a flying pair of skates and you could use twitter um that that was that game it it, it kind of gets the art style of that um, but you roll around a roller dome and shoot people with guns, and it's that kind of action. Um, so that's the thing. Also, uh, Street Fighter Six, another trailer. Oh, right, cool. I yeah, so I it's actually we're seeing some some. The fr I I just call it a frame data. <laughs> right, uh, there's no, it here. doesn't show like the UI or anything, um, but it does show. Uh, you know, your favorite characters executing some maneuvers All right. on the we got, we got a nice city. Um, this looks like the New York level from Street Fighter V. We got Beard um, Ryu. Yeah, it, it opens with Daddy Luke. Ryu. Luke in the gym. It's not like a game. Uh, some narration. Okay, then. Oh, you oh, God. Yeah. oh shit. Chun Li with more legs than ever. Um, looks like they're doing, doing kind of hip-hop soundtrack. It looks like there's some sort of adventure mode happening. Uh, yeah. Character model running around, maybe it's just a cutscene. But no, that looks like a, uh, open-world adventure-style thing, which they, I think they kind of did something like that in one of the console ports of Alpha 2. Um, hmm. But, yeah, so... Uh, this confirms that Chun Li is going to be in there. Um, a few new characters looks like. Uh, a 
Unless these are just like really deep cuts oh, that I'm have, not familiar with. They have the online, the battle hub, so it's just like fucking Fighter Z. Yeah. Jamie, Luke, Chun Li, Ryu. All confirmed. Um, they show you some of the moves. Uh, it looks. It look like target combos. EX moves obviously are, are there. Um, there's some sort of counter. Some series maintain the mechanic from uh, entry to entry. Yeah, it looks like there's some sort of counter mechanic. Um, like a parry almost. It's probably going to gonna spend uh, some sort of resource. I don't know if it's going to be like a uh, focus attack or more similar to like a uh, V reversal. Um, but it looks like the, the next-gen rivalry here is going to be between Luke and Jamie. They're going to be the Ryu and Ken of this next generation of Street Fighter that, I, as, as far as I'm aware, Street Fighter VI still takes place between Street Fighters IV and three in terms of the timeline. Like, I think Street Fighter three is the end of, end of the road there, but I don't, I don't fucking know anymore. I... I didn't pay much attention to the story of Street Fighter Five. We'll have to hop on a wiki and read. Yep. Um, um, the one other thing from the state of play was they were talking a bunch of Resident Evil stuff, including the Resident Evil Four remake. This time in the vein of RE One, Two, and Three, as they've been doing. Yes. Which um, I don't know. This one's a little a little different. For you know, it's different for me because like one RE Four has been put on everything because it's. Why it was wildly popular. Uh, that's an understatement, by the way. Wildly popular. Um, and two, we already have a really good Resident Evil 4 remake in Resident Evil 8. The other one about <laughs> a European village where yeah. you have to fight non zombie monsters. I mean, everyone's been waiting for this one. Uh, Resident Evil 4 is probably the most popular entry in the franchise. Um, as Peter mentioned, mm -hmm. it's been. It's it's in the same rarefied era of, of Doom as uh, far as being ported to pretty much any platform that can run it, even if it can only just kind of barely run it. <laughs> um, yeah. But, uh, you know, ever since they started doing these Resident Evil remakes, people have been waiting for Resident Evil 4's turn. Uh, Resident Evil 2 is probably the other biggest one. Um, because RE2 is probably the second most popular Resident Evil. Um, mm -hmm. even if it's not my favorite. RE4 is, is, that's, that's that sense. <laughs> it's my favorite Resident Evil <laughs> game. Um, so I will probably be plopping down the thirty nine ninety nine or whatever they end up charging for this. Um, yep. whereas I did not for... Video games can can make you feel as un on nerve, on on your nerves or on edge as RE4 does, just walking around in a village. <laughs> like nothing speaking, happening. Speaking of walking around a village, um, uh, V Rising uh, is the hot new game that everybody's been playing. Uh, if you ever want to try out a vampire a, survival. A no, no, it's just um, like got a lot of attention. It's a, sm a small developer, um, and it's oh, like is this that top-down uh, shooty game thing or no? I don't think it's a, I don't some, know if it's a shooty it's game. That. It's like it's got some abilities. It's got some like crafting of materials. It's like um uh, it, I don't know, sure, what's okay. it called? I Valheim. Like it's like if Valheim was like it's like if Valheim was um uh uh with vamp with vampires instead of like Vikings. Um, Man, and you got can get powers. Um, you got like you can build your town or whatever your hut. Uh, it's got like like day and night mechanics where like the sun will hurt you, but you have to get into shade. Got, um, I think it's got werewolves in it, or you can transform into a wolf. You know, you're a vampire. I I don't know the exact mechanics of it. Um, yeah, I saw it played a little bit. Um, even though the <laughs> gameplay that I I saw was of a streamer getting griefed by a, a stream sniper um it's 
too early in development for them to have some uh you know patches to some of the stuff so there's obviously some some kinks to work out with some like pvp elements there is like pvp stuff um but there is like an immortal like you can you can be like uh undamageable or untargetable for a period of time uh depending on like when you join the server or something like that so uh, enough people seem to like it so it's uh kind of interesting i'm i'm looking here um this was i guess like we probably could have covered this last week but fallout london there's um, there's gonna be a fallout london isn't no fallout london was a mod i, thought that was... I believe oh it's a mod yeah. okay that makes it was sense. a mod okay okay that yeah. clears up for me. i saw that um, i think uh, a couple weeks ago or something gotcha yeah, it's been so popular like mod right here think. Yeah, oh, it I think like it's, it's just like... starting. I don't think they've like released anything yet. Yeah. Other than like um, concept stuff. Yeah. Well, it's a concept. Like it's got a lot it? of a lot of hype behind it. Um, mm-hmm. Speaking of adding things, <laughs> popular additions to games, we have to. I'm contractually obligated con- to continue the chronicling of No Man's Sky editions. Uh, mm-hmm. We've got another one. Um, it's Leviathan. Uh, so this one is really, really big creature ships. Nice. Uh, I think that's the main content of, of this one. Uh, EA has officially unveiled the sequel to Jedi Fallen Order. Uh, everyone's favorite oh, yes. charisma singularity, <laughs> Cal Kestis, uh, will be returning in Jedi Survivor, and it will be out next year. Um, I think the first things I've heard from it is it takes place five years after events of Fallen Order. Um, uh, the, the trailer shows us some mysterious red lightsaber using character. Um, there's somebody in a Bacta tank. Um, there's a... I want cl- to clarify they're, they're for races. the audience that this is a uh, cinematic trailer. There is no gameplay shown whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. And yeah. with no, a no gameplay, launch no. date of next year, that should make you worried. Yeah, I don't expect to hear anything, um, uh, you know, gameplay-wise for, for a, a while. Well, I mean, uh, my, my point with that is that a year is not a lot of time to develop a game. So if you can't, if you don't have anything to show, a year out from launch, you're kind of in trouble. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how much of it was just to like show for um, a Star Wars celebration or what. Um, there, I mean, there was a lot of like stuff put out there. Well, they were going to do they it for a Star Wars ready. celebration, you know, and it's just a cinematic trailer. You'd think they would have done it around the fourth of May. Mm. You thunk. Maybe I, I don't know. I mean, maybe yeah. maybe they had it all lined up. I don't I don't know why why Star Wars does what they do. I mean, they had a fuck ton of stuff that they released during Star Wars Celebration, for the the I think it was a four day period that they had released content and just content out of the wazoo. I think there was another Star Wars game as well, but I don't remember exactly what it was. Um, but yeah, it, it it seems like it's gonna be a good follow up. I mean. The Fallen Order was was really really well received, um, and I just hope they bring enough enough things new to the table to uh, get people to go out and buy it. I'm pretty sure the story was you know, will will bring people back enough. Um, I get the one depiction was that there was a lot of cinematics in the game Fallen Order, and it just the guy is looking more and more like the voice actor. So it's generated a lot of hype of like, are they gonna include him in a show or something like that or a movie? Like the actor, voice yeah, actor. Maybe. Yeah, Fallen Order did pretty well at seventy nine on Metacritic. That's uh, pretty good. Um, not a ton of negative reviews from like professional critics. So take that for what you will. Um, I played it a little bit. I should probably finish it. I didn't I didn't love my time with it, but I didn't spend a ton of time with it at the same time. So 
I don't really have a, a strong opinion on it. But it, there's there's a list, there's a queue forming because there's Vampire the Masquerade that I want to finish, and then Disco Elysium I want to finish. Yeah. Definitely want to finish Disco Elysium. I want to see where that shit goes. Yeah. Um, should we talk about Pokemon Scarlet Violet? Yeah, and the trailer for Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet. It's uh, the next gen Pokemon. It's it's interesting. They showed off a uh, cooperative feature. It looks like up to four mm-hmm. people can uh, play co op in a campaign. Um, how they're going to implement that and like what dimension it's going to add remains unclear. They didn't show a ton. Um, yeah. From what we've seen, it looks like the graphics are a little uh, polished up from Sword and Shield. Um, and they're doing an interesting thing. I think this is the first time they've ever done it where there is a different professor in either game. And they're pushing a uh, old versus new theme, it would seem. Yeah, it seems like the Scar- Pokemon Scarlet is going to be set in the past, which explains why... Uh, the rumors of them having Hisuian forms uh, appear in that game, um, or or even I heard today um, that there was the theory that the gimmick or or so you know the Megas the Gigantamax, the gimmick of this is like ancient versus future versions of Pokemon, so there might be like an ancient Charizard, you could make him turn into that form or whatever. Uh, or a futuristic version of Charizard. I that we have there's it's everybody's been theory posting, From but it you seems like some it. might call it primal reversions. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, it could be like that. Um, but it it seems like it, they really are pushing the past versus future. I mean, even the legendaries names mean um, like uh, like old old it's, versus it's new. It's like and that. Nudagon. Yeah, I forgot what it was. These legendaries um, are not exactly uh. Most one looks like work. a dick and balls. Yeah, uh, one one literally I, looks like I a dick and balls. I hope that they bring back baby Pokemon, and then because you loved baby Pokemon before, old Pokemon, baby Pokemon, they're they advanced not... age now. I, I the think tree, how they the do one baby Pokemon now, where you have to specifically breed for them, is is fine. I, I don't, we don't need to go back to the days of needing to fucking evolve with friendship your baby Pokemon that you're trying to breed for competitive. I don't have time to build friendship with all these Cleffa. I just need a fucking Clefable. Clefable, my Clefable. In bad news, uh, the Steam Deck's docking station has been delayed indefinitely. Uh, Valve is citing parts shortages and COVID closures as causes. I am unconvinced that they ever intended to release a talk in the first place. Uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised. My my doomer pill mentality and conspiracy conspiracy theory, Andy senses uh, tell me that a lot of people are hiding behind claims of COVID shortages and COVID issues for just their own lapses in production and and willingness to adapt with the time. So. Uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, they were never intending to make a full release or something of that, of, of yeah. that nature. Yeah, you can just buy like an anchor dock off of Amazon. There are so many third-party docks intended for use with like the Switch that will work perfectly fine with a Steam Deck and probably cost a lot less than Valve's official Steam Deck. So, mm-hmm. I, I would not worry. Worry, fret not! All six Steam Deck owners out there, you have options. Um, Lupe Dex, new desktop shortcut console, looks to muscle in on the Stream Deck's turf. Um, this is, I'm excited about this simply because there has really not been a competitor to the Stream Deck um, at all. It's been like it's its own thing. There's not been a product that competes with it, which is never a good thing. You want to have competition in the marketplace. And right now, the Steam de- the Stream Deck kind of has uh, an issue. I from what I see, you have the the Stream Deck XL, which is like 30 keys or something like that. Then you have the Stream Deck um, regular one, which I believe is 15. 
and then you have the mini, which is what I have, which is only six. There needs to be like an eight button size. Like that, I feel, is, is the correct size. <laughs> um, but the, uh, the loop deck seems to be a 12 button thing. Um, it's coming for the Steam Deck with its latest PC console, uh, the Loop Deck Live S. It's a somewhat simplified version of their larger products with a couple of dials, some buttons, a large touch screen to sit under your screen. For It's launching for a little cheaper, with the hope of appealing to streamer sensibilities. I guess Loop Deck makes uh, products like this for more professional workflows. Um, it is a 3x5 grid that can be set. I guess it is 15. It can be set to open apps, operate PC functions, or select stuff. That sounds vague. It's because it is. Um, they're definitely gunning for the um, Loop Deck S. It'll go on sale over on Indiegogo, where it can be picked up for $106 for the first 99 people. Beyond that, Goes up gradually in price for a few tiers, but will ultimately sell for 149 for whomever wants it, and that's uh, about what a regular Steam Deck, a Stream Deck costs. Um, Steam Deck and Stream Deck, they, I hate that fucking name from Steam because it trips me up every time. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, well, you look out for that if you don't want to bake yourself into Elgato's ecosystem. Um, Diablo Immortal reportedly won't be releasing in Belgium or the Netherlands because loot boxes are illegal in that c those countries and <laughs> Blizzard doesn't give a shit and would rather not release the game in those countries than release the game without loot boxes in it. All that tells me is that the, uh, the, the whales are just driving 90% of all of that. If you can't get the whales, it's not worth releasing the game. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's been mobile gaming for years now. Like, it, it's 95% whales. Like, that's where the money comes from. Like, I knew a kid in fucking, I didn't know him well, but I had heard tale that a kid in my high school who was like a year, maybe two years behind me had spent $1,700 on Clash of Clans. Jeez, that's I. I that's I can see it. Really bad, yeah. Uh, I. It sounds bad. It is bad. Um, but I could kind of see it, you know. Especially if you just like. I've heard the. You don't have I've your... heard like the the internet horror stories of the five figure whales. Well, Jeez, I, yeah. I, I mean, yes, but, I'm not saying. Well, yeah, a thousand dollars on a mobile game, is also awful. But no, but for like for a kid in high school who has, like, no money, like, that's, that's well, a lot. It, was it somebody who had their, like, card hooked up or their account hooked up to their parents' card or something like that? And just, I like, don't know the you dates. Know, 20 bucks every, yeah. I mean, it could just be, like, 20 bucks every every other week or every week to have drop to on this thing, and, and maybe their parents are well off enough to not care. I mean... I got, a, I got a cousin like that, and you know, every now and then, just, I just don't see certain things, and he probably got away with that a lot in, in you know, high school. I can see that, but yeah, it is a uh, it's tough, it's tough yeah. to see, especially when you're like, who? I feel bad dropping like five dollars on Pokemon Go every once in a blue moon. Yeah, I'm forced to. Um. Data miners believe they have uncovered um, details from the upcoming Cyberpunk 2077 expansion. Um, in the 1.5 patch, they claim to have found text files, mostly English dialogue, but some in Polish. Um, they've been uploaded to uh, multiple subreddits, including gaming leaks and rumors inside the archive or folders called Quest and Open underscore World the second of which has subfolders for fixtures, many world stories, scene street stories, and world encounters. The text lays out a storyline and related side quests that begin with V infiltrating the combat zone, an area of Night City that wasn't previously explored in the main game. 
Quest Giver is a netrunner using the name Songbird, who hacks into V's head and temporarily replaces Johnny Silverhand, which seems like a convenient way of explaining Keanu Reeves' absence. <laughs> <laughs> Presumably getting him back into the recording booth would be a lot of money. Um, so that's cool. I've been looking forward to a reason to go back to Cyberpunk 2077. I've kind of not been playing it much. Um, because I, I played it and it doesn't, I don't feel like the other ending is, uh, enough reason to just go <laughs> and play it again. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I'd like to see what, what fixes and what new, new angles and stories the DLC brings. And with that, we will talk about the cinematic equivalent of DLC, the Bob's <laughs> Burgers movie. <laughs> the 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 paid DLC on a free game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but but hey, it's a good DLC. It's it's a it's a quality it bad. DLC. It wasn't bad. Um, it is uh, more in line with expectations than you might have expected, which sounds weird. But um, to my knowledge, there has only been one other. Fox animated property to receive a movie, and that was the Simpsons movie in 2007. And that movie was uh, not what many expected from the Simpsons movie. No. It um, was very exciting for me in seventh grade. A, y- a young middle schooler was, who was learning to enjoy a teen-rated comedy. It was like, oh, it's the show I like, but bigger. Yeah, and um, typical of these animated movie adaptations, you know, they have a bigger budget, animation looks a little slicker, um, they can they can do more stuff and make a longer thing, and, you know, it is it is what you expect, and in, in so far as it is a longer episode of Bob's Burgers. Um, With slightly elevated stakes. Yes, the stakes yeah, and, are a little and, higher, uh, but this the, the stakes like a, are higher. Yeah, a two-parter episode, I could see for like a season finale, or or three-parter as it were. Um, a lot of musical numbers. I was not expecting that. No, I guess. I can't remember. Does Bob's Burgers normally have music in it? I think it's I mean, every now and then. A lot of singing. The sh- the yeah. people in the show do a lot of singing. But I don't know not if like numbers. Yeah, maybe that's a later seasons thing. I haven't been keeping up with the later seasons. Neither have I. But a, a um, lot of people are pointing to like the music as like the songs are as like the the thing that's actually the breath of fresh air uh, in like the yes. Bob's Burgers franchise. The first musical number is a little, it's a little, you know, overdone. It's a very, yeah. it's very bland. Broadway, um, which. Which didn't give me a good impression starting out because I was like, "Oh, this is—they're just putting generic musical numbers in this. This is not—I'm not about it." But the other musical numbers, the later ones, mm. were much funnier yes. and more engaging. So yeah, I guess maybe it's like nice. it's like the introductory, get your feet wet. Like here's here's what this movie is going to be like. Um, they kind of set the tone for the the movie um and what it's going to try to do uh because it is kind of like a it's kind of like a dismal uh the the, some of the talking points is kind of dim it's kind of like uh kind of sad i don't know there's uh, a lot of depression and like worry uh in in a a couple of things that they were talking about with like weird sunny side up like the song Mm -hmm. Uh, approach to certain things where they're cracking jokes at the expense of the dad and and the uh, uh, you know uh, ever optimistic um, uh, the the mother and and wife and I mean Linda, that's a lot of Linda. the comedy of Bob's Burgers is that they yeah. live like these very imperfect lives yeah they they are like kinda, they are a struggling family but they they don't really let that affect them. In a meaningful way, you gotta live somehow. Yeah, mm-hmm. and sometimes you you grift your way to another to another month. Um, you know, some some shit comes up, and you just you take it 
and you go and you don't even fucking look at it. You you just live with it. Um, I always I always think about the uh, the pilot or the pre show uh, premise for this was that they were all cannibals, and that the they were they would steal bodies from the mortuary that, next door to yes. make their burgers. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So they always wanted to be, but then I think they. Oh, what I got green done, like I think the pilot episode was like a riff on that joke, and then they yes. kind of moved on. What the health inspectors yeah. and the rumors that they were serving human meat. Um, I I think it's probably better for all involved that they didn't go down that road. I don't think that concept would have have the legs that regular old Bob's Burgers has had, and they might not have gotten uh gotten the movie. Gotten, gotten that far. Yeah, yeah um, and it probably wouldn't have gotten like as big of a, a fan base as it does because it, it does have a pretty decent sized fan base with, with just the people who love uh, uh, H, H. John John H. Benjamin, H. John yeah. Benjamin. Yeah. H. John Benjamin. Uh, where they're just like, they fucking love everything he touches. Uh, I mean, this is the guy I just learned recently that he uh, hired a jazz character. band. Oh, so you he, heard about he his jazz a, album? hired a jazz band to create an album and it's called i think the album is called like i should have learned or something like that Mm -hmm. Uh, or i should have and then dot 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 at the bottom in small text learned how to play the piano Piano. because his piano riffs are just him fucking hitting keys on the piano he doesn't know how to play the piano at all he He decides to make an entire piano jazz album (laughs) so there's this awesome jazz band behind him and they're going building up to a piano solo and it's just It's fucking hysterical. So it's a honest. comedy album. It's an avant-garde comedy album. Oh yeah, um, it's it's great. And, um, and we did see a a wide variety of demographics show up to this when we went to the theater. Yes, it was quite the the mixed crowd. Yeah, we old. got a matinee that was yeah. that was very nice. Um, yeah, it was it was a pretty good experience, and I had fun watching the movie. I, I didn't come in with massive expectations, and I would say my expectations were largely met. Um, it's a longer episode of Bob's Burgers, higher stakes. I I laughed at a lot of the jokes. Um, a lot of the situational comedy was funny. There was like stuff that was, you know, kind of hits you over the head, the surface level com- comedy, and then there was some some deeper layers of comedy, which I always appreciate uh, as a student of the comedy gang ma- game. Um, mm-hmm. I I would give this if you if you are a fan of Bob's Burgers, definitely go see it. If you are not a fan of Bob's Burgers, if obviously if you don't like Bob's Burgers, I wouldn't bother. Um, but if you're kind of ambivalent to Bob's Burgers, I'd say you could wait for it to come to streaming. I don't think this is something that necessarily has to be viewed in the theater. I would... Now, I'm actually going to take a weird take here and argue to the contrary if you're on the fence. Um, I feel like this if you're not if you're already not watching a lot of bob's burgers if you're kind of on the fence about it having one more uh long episode on your stream box along you know sitting right next to all the other episodes that you never watch on your stream box um isn't gonna do it but i feel like if you're if you're on the fence and you want to take it make it a make it an event spruce Mm -hmm. it up why don't you bobby Take your friends, go to the theater. (laughs) Go watch the movie. It's all right. It's pretty good. It's not amazing, but... Uh, It's it's a hard recommend to someone to spend $13 to watch a 90-minute episode of a show that they're kind of like, eh, towards. (laughs) I I had a couple good laughs out of it. I I I thought the jokes were were pretty decent. It's just it's... um, I don't know. there, There is something... A little odd to to go from like seeing just in twenty minute chunks and then having the drastic change to. But then again, we we do we live in a society and this society binge watches everything. So like, you know, how many people are actually sitting down and just catching one episode of Bob's Burgers? You know, more likely they're gonna sit down and watch an hour's worth or two hours worth of Bob's Burgers. Uh, at night, sometimes if they're really avid lovers of the, of a show, it didn't. It, the movie did a pretty good job of not feeling overly long. Um, yeah, there's a little bit like 
towards the end of the second act, I was kind of like, okay, we're we gonna get into something here. It was a bit of a slow starter um, of a movie, just in general. Um, but yeah, the animation was was definitely more expensive, and the musical numbers included a lot of dancing uh, to show that off. Um, a lot of a lot more movement than you're used to in Bob's Burgers, which can kind of throw throw you off a little bit. But yeah, um, definitely a lot of the dance numbers too so that that like it just ties into like all the movement and um not so much action but i guess like yeah, at least action movement. like that third act that climax yes. the chase that yeah chasing yeah and all right. that and it was good comedy action yes yeah there were yeah jokes and japes and it, it it was contextual within the action um they had setups and punch lines yeah. There were like there were like slight things that I noticed that were like really subtle like comedic timings with the characters. Like I'm thinking during the chase scene in particular, like it's a tense situation, and then they just pair that with Tina just like awkwardly looking over at the guy like riding along next to them, and then she like makes eye contact, looks away, and then like makes and makes a weird mm -hmm. face, and it's just so awkward in that moment. And it's like, the yeah, okay, I Bob's Burgers like stammering. I, yeah. no, no, you, I mean. No, 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 no. You go. You, you, okay. Uh, well, but I actually, actually, can I go? Um. <laughs> yeah, it's it's the same humor as the show. They they were very true to the show in that respect. Um, so that's that's a point in its favor, I suppose. Mm -hmm. And they did have a burger of the day. They did. They did do that. I I appreciate that. It's a small thing. I I kind of wish there was like more burger, like even a second burger. <laughs> More it is. It's just Bob's Burger. Yeah. Um. I guess. I guess to kind of get into like more of the spoiler. Not really spoiler territory, but like, um, the one other thing I, I like. Uh, I don't know how much we're going to discuss the plot in detail. The deep. Yeah. I. I mean the <laughs> deep lore dumps. I, I like just picking out things I liked in the movie. I'll just do that. Oh fuck it. I'll just pick out things I liked in the movie. One of the things I liked in the movie was catching the puns in the background. Bob's Burgers loves their fucking mm -hmm. puns uh, with the burger names as well. But also, like, the business shop names. Like, right off the get-go, you see the store that's closing down next to them. Um, mm -hmm. So you think you can pants or something like that. Yeah. And it's, uh, <laughs> it's uh, what is it, uh, Alterations Shop yep. that's closing down. <laughs> and, I just, and they do that all over the place. They do that, like, there's a physical therapy shop that has a pun name to it. And oh, it's, it's too a... good. It is a classic adult uh, animated humor, uh, almost like a running joke at this point, because they've been doing that since The Simpsons, um, right? Where in The Simpsons there will always be like the the message boards on like the McDonald, you know, the the Krusty Burger, yeah. or like the the agenda in front of the convention center, and there'll always be some joke like that. Um, I kind of. I don't know how much it's like. Uh, I don't know how much they go into the regular show, but I I do like how they gave like Bob more characterization in this. Like I get, I got to kind of, you got to see more of his internal life a little bit. Which is a weird, it's a weird uh, point to make, but you know when they're you kind of see. His, I've never I never saw flashbacks in in the show. I'm sure they were there, but I yeah, like I like that seems them. like something you get into more in the late seasons, um, mm -hmm. which I haven't I haven't been keeping up uh, much. I kind of like hit a wall. And that is to its point though that the fact that we haven't been watching, I mean, we can just watch this. Yeah, you can drop time. right in if you've if you've seen Bob's Burgers. You know, there's some there are some references to. Material you might not get if you haven't seen the specific episode, like the biker gang that they had interactions with for the one-eyed snakes or whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've seen that episode that they had the interactions with it, them. Um, but you kind of get, I mean, it's already kind of well set up that the kids just kind of know all the CD players yeah. in the town. Like, I mean, you, I, it did not impair my uh, enjoyment of the joke any but i didn't re i wasn't like oh yeah i remember the episode where they hung out with the one-eyed snakes hmm. or like i don't remember who you know mr fish odor's brother's 
girlfriend is. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like vaguely remember that stuff. That was that was stuff that I'm like a lot there was a lot of oh yeah moments. Oh but yeah, that's the, right. The I comedy, showed the landlord. The comedy that that they're involved in um does not suffer for not having yeah. seen the relevant ep- episode. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Oh, speaking of missed lore stuff, like did something happen to Gene's guitar or is his keyboard? Oh, I actually he that's didn't a good bring point. that out in this movie. He's like it wasn't out at all. Shit. Yeah. Maybe he lost it in one in an episode we didn't see. Mm-hmm. It it could have been. Know. Yeah, Bob's Burgers lore heads out there. Give us the, <laughs> give us the, the reference. The canon. I need that. Yeah, yeah, because he he definitely what that's like his staple thing. That's like the one thing I remember from Gene is that he always has that that keyboard piano. The like they guitar. even make a reference of that in the opening, um, uh, like twenty first century or twentieth century Fox or whatever it was, twentieth mm-hmm. century uh, studio logo, and they have like his keyboard and the dog barks and it, and the the fart sounds over it. So he did not do any of his soundboardy stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I was uh, I was pleased with the with the movie. Pleased with like the um, character developments overall. There was a little bit of an arc. I think yeah, Louise I mean, the kinda... characters had had arcs, and they were they were paid off in satisfying ways. Mm-hmm. They were set up pretty laboriously. Where yeah, you know, like mm-hmm. you have the 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 problem that the parents have is very organic and relatable, um, and they set that up just through dialogue um right. a little expositional dialogue but it's all right uh the kids however each have like not really a dream because they're awake but like they have, they have a vision sequence a vision sequence all back to back to back to back to establish their what their their arc is gonna be for this movie <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. Um, which is a little ham-fisted, but it worked out okay, and the, the payoffs for each of the arcs are, are fairly satisfying. Um, and uh, it's a fun little caper, a little, little, little mystery, a little murder, a little, little Columbo action. Um, I saw you do it. Well, just one more thing. I saw you do it. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, I think it's, 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 it's appropriate for all ages i would say um yeah that was i forgot that like it it's a show that airs on tv and as such needs to be like pg-13 at most Mm. yeah uh there really wasn't anything in this that was too adult i mean there are a couple of of dirty jokes but i don't think a kid would really pick up on it nor would it be too damaging to their psyche if they did so this is definitely yeah. something you can, I didn't, can take your kids to. Yeah, there there wasn't anything like like really um I guess risque to the specifics. Like there wasn't anything like super risque about like I mean they didn't even do like the, the most risque that they do is honestly any stuff with Tina and like mm-hmm. uh, the one kid with like shaking his butt or whatever like but he like, does. Like, the the parents never get like school, sexual. You already, yeah, it's not yeah. Really funny either. And like, um, if you're a younger I, kid, you got you got a good point though. You put me on a good point though. Like, we grew up with the first couple seasons of Family Guy and some of the middle seasons of The Simpsons, and our comedy turned out this way, thus way. You know the you know Simpsons, Futurama, Family Guy. Mm-hmm. I don't know what the kids who grow up on Bob's Burgers comedy are gonna end <laughs> up like, because that. Like the comedy is good, but it is it is dry. It is it is dry as a bone. Uh, is, the is aforementioned that... awkward stammering sequences as a as a repeated comedic device. I don't know how middle schooler me would have reacted to that. I, is, that is that like Zoomer humor? Is that Zoomer Zoomer? I don't think it's Zoomer almost humor. opposite Zoomer humor. Because it's, it's not. Like... Yeah, the show isn't made by Zoomers or even for Zoomers. And like kids, like kid kids today, I think are are like Gen Alpha. Um, I worry for comedy, the future of comedy, for several reasons. Uh, the existence of Bob's Burgers is not one of them. No, no. <laughs> um, 
H. John Benjamin has good taste and is you know, good comedic investments. I just think of this in yeah. Archer, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean this. This, Archer's definitely where I'm they sure could. the Archer can, movie can, is coming that's sometime. <laughs> sure, yeah. I mean, and that the Archer Archer at least gives them a chance to like kind of let the reins off and kind of go I, a little bit nuts. They, yeah. Do, the question is, do they wait till the next 007 movie comes out to to like? Um, you know what? I think it? I think now would actually be a pretty good time because you've just come off of uh, No Time to Die. They haven't picked the next James Bond yet, so mm-hmm. perhaps now is the time to go for the parody. Yeah. What if they, what if they just did not even a parody? They just did a James Bond movie, but it was but the Archer. The cast. thing with Archer now, they might not actually do an Archer movie because Jessica Walters has passed, mm-hmm. and you can't really oh, replace yeah, sure. her. The moment's kind of moved for Archer because I know the the creators. That's why they started doing those spinoff seasons because they're like. You gotta wait until we're back in the creative verve to yeah. make more yeah. regular seasons. They should just do yeah, what they did a lot of like... and just come back when they have an idea for a new season. <laughs> and lie, in, lie in the this... cut for for four years at a time. We know we said we ended, but we had this really cool idea idea for an episode. We gotta make a season around it. <laughs> I mean, that's what I, the streaming environment's great for that. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, also, I was also thinking while we were talking about should you stream it, should you watch it in theaters, I'm just thinking about how many different forms of media exist even more now. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I'm tempted to just see, I want to see someone make, like, a big multimedia show. Like, not an ARG where there was this, like, conspiratorial aspect to it and there's like fucking mysteries and shit i just want like episode one to be a streaming show episode two to be a podcast episode three to be a fucking written word essay and episode four to be like a board game and this breeder is precisely why (laughs) blumhouse hasn't called us (laughs) these ideas will not make money (laughs) Just the most inconvenient, sh- uh, mm-hmm. you know. I can't even. You can't even call it a show. You can't put a name to it. It's beyond conception. We need a new word to describe it. It's like a new genre. <laughs> Not a. It's the. It's like the live action version of a show. <laughs> so yes, it is. Yes, I believe. Bosburgers is live action. <laughs> They're trying it's to emulate pretty- real humans and real people. It's live action. Um. Yeah, so Bob's Burgers definitely gets a uh, tacit recommendation from all of us. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know that you have to go out to see it in the theater, but um, it's certainly not the worst movie you can go out and see right now. Um, yeah. Beyond the speaking of the worst movie you could see right now, um, Peter and I are planning a new series called Masterpiece Theater, in which we will not intentionally find the worst movies out there we are instead seeking the most painfully average movies out there um we will endeavor to um see as many movies as we can and guess beforehand the imdb rating or guess after we've seen it the imdb rating and then compare it to what it actually is and we will keep leaderboards of both the closest movie to the perfect 5.0 of mediocrity on IMDb and the cumulative delta off that Peter and I have been um, yeah. in our ratings assessments. And at the end of each season, which I don't know when we'll delineate seasons of it, we will crown a champion. <laughs> the beige crown. The beige crown. <laughs> the beige crown. <laughs> the beige crown of, of apathy. <laughs> Is it, who gets the beige medal? Page wood, metal. The wood tier. The and page so, metal. The silver medal goes to. Not <gasps> quite honor. <laughs> um, so be on the lookout for that on our YouTube channel. We also have other ideas for a series, including potentially a snack food review segment called Saturn Snacks. Um, so lots, lots of live action, medium form content is being planned for the YouTube channel. 
um, to kind of to make up for the reduction in our streaming schedule, which is uh, now on a when we feel like it sort of basis. Um, when there's a game we want to play or if we just want to hang out, we'll do it. Um, we're not necessarily setting dates and times anymore. So follow us on Twitter at Stud Saturn to get the skinny on when we will be going live on Twitch. Um, but definitely want to want to get subscribed to the YouTube channel. You can watch all of our stream archives on there to see maybe why <laughs> we're taking some breaking from streaming. <laughs> um, and of course, you can enjoy the new content that will be hitting out there soonish, as soon as we get graphics packages designed for <laughs> for the show. Um, all right. So until next time, be well, stay safe, and party like it's 1995. Bye.